Here's a California man who basically proves everyone has their price. He's a gambler, and betting plays a big part of his life. A good 90 percent. Brian Zembeck says he would do just about anything to win a bet. So when a friend came to him with a truly outrageous offer, he had to take him up on it. It was a bet he couldn't refuse. I was bet $100,000 I had to have breast implants as large as a girlfriend's of mine. And you did it? Yeah. You heard it right. Brian went from zero to 38C for a big payday. Now look closely as he plays a game of indoor golf you can see the shape of his bosom. So far, Brian's had his implants for three years. The bet called for him to have them for one year. So yes, he's already pocketed the 100 G's. Oh, son of a man. I did your 15. No, my breast got in my way. No, my you say this is just too weird? Not for a gambler like Brian. You thought getting breast implants was normal? Well, it was, you know, it's money, anything to do with money to me is normal. In my world, anything we gamble at is normal. So it's like a job, an everyday job. Life is a laugh. It's full of fun. And he's definitely one of the fun people. This is the man who put Brian in a bra. New York City cosmetic surgeon Dr. Felix Schiffman. The two guys are, what else? Gambling buddies. And how funny. Guess how they arrived at payment for surgery. I said, this is my fee. And we agreed on the fee. But by the time we got finished playing back, I mean, uh, I guess, uh, he got it almost for free. Brian went under the knife, and after the surgery was over, this is what Dr. Schiffman told him. You got beautiful breasts. I just said the face could be improved now. Let's work on the face. From head to toe, Brian is just fine. At least his wife thinks so. That's right, his wife. Brian was married last year, but for a period of time before he tied the knot, Anita had no idea her husband-to-be wore a bra, too. He never let me hug him, and I was like, why? And then he was like, oh, I'm ticklish or something, you know, and he'll move away. And so how did she find out? By reading a book about wild gambling stories, which has a chapter on Brian's big bet. I started crying because I guess I was in shock. Anita got over her shock and married him anyway. Does that bother you, that his breasts are bigger than yours? No. No. No, mine looks much nicer. There's no telling what Brian's baby daughter might ask him someday about all this, but his gambling buddies, frankly, aren't impressed. I was a little underwhelmed, actually. <laughs> it's kind of a turnoff, to be honest. <laughs> On a day-to-day -day basis, Brian doesn't show off. He wears loose clothes and tight athletic shirts to hide his assets. You don't have any regrets having done this? No. No regrets at all? No. You've no. never felt humiliated that you, no. as a man, are wearing breast no. implants? No. 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 For now, so Brian has no immediate plans to remove the implants. He says the original bet has been extended to $10,000 a year for each year he keeps them. This guy may look normal to you, but he's got quite a secret lurking beneath that loose shirt. He goes to catch some rays at poolside, and that's when it hits you. The dude's got breast implants. His name is Brian Zembic, and his girlfriend, that's her on the left, admits she's a little jealous. He has a bigger breast than me. Me? I'm just stunned. So why would a man like Brian get breast implants? Well, it started out as a bet here in Las Vegas. A friend paid him $100,000 to put them in for a year. But why, a decade later, hasn't Brian taken them out? It is a normal part of my life. It, it, it really is. As sick as it is, it's normal. It's also money in the bank because Brian gets an extra 10 grand for each additional year he keeps the implants. Clearly, this guy marches to the beat of a different drummer. I kept that in mind you as he to took me us. shopping this is nice. for no, a sports no, this is bra. Nice. Can I ask um, what size you are? Um, I guess I'm like a 38. I guess like a C. Wow, maybe. okay. You would really wear this bright orange sports bra. Yeah, I don't care. What do I care? Wow. <laughs> Back home, he's just plain dad to his 13-year-old daughter, Nika. It's a little weird, obviously. So maybe the guy known as the boob man isn't a boob at all. Ta-da! Time for mass millions. For some people, these little round balls hold the American dream. 
a chance to grab for the brass ring. You have about as much chance of hitting the lottery as you do of being struck by lightning. But despite the odds, somebody's got to win. The folks at the Lottery Commission love it when the big prize goes to a needy family, makes great public relations. But what happens when the winner is an alleged underworld boss? Well, that's what they found out in Boston when a man named Whitey Bulger hit the jackpot last July. Whitey Bulger is a 61-year-old uh, resident of South Boston, Irish Catholic, convicted bank robber, did time in Alcatraz. He's perceived as a very mysterious uh, fellow uh, but at the same time very well known uh, because of the federal government and law enforcement officials like the FBI who have pegged him as one of the top mobsters in the New England area. This is James Whitey Bulger. Few people ever get close enough to take his picture. But even if he's rarely seen, most people in Boston know who Whitey is. He's the reputed king of Beantown's crime world. Mr. Bulger basically was controlling the uh, loan shocking, extortion, narcotics and gaming in the greater Boston area. Despite those allegations, Whitey's been a real pro at eluding the law. Since serving time for bank robbery 25 years ago, he hasn't spent a night in jail. He's famous for only using uh, pay phones and then moving mysteriously just when the authorities uh, get the pay phone that he's using, he moves to another one. He must have all the luck of the Irish one could have. Whitey's also connected. His own brother, William Bolger, is the state Senate president. We tried to talk to Senator Billy Bolger, but were told by an aide that the senator would not comment on his brother's past. So it is an interesting uh, coincidence, shall we say, uh, that the uh, top uh, mobster in uh, New England is also the brother of the, one of the top political figures. And uh, it's something that uh, I know for many years people have tried to link them up, but have been unable to do so. There are some who say Whitey's only real concern these days is the IRS. An IRS net worth investigation hangs over him like a dark cloud. In a net worth probe, he would be forced to disclose his sources of income. Uh, it's a very, very serious threat for him to be investigated along that line. But a few weeks ago, master criminal Whitey Bulger became lucky Whitey Bulger. Unbelievably lucky Whitey Bulger. A lottery ticket and six numbers later, all his IRS fears disappeared. This could be your lucky night. It's time to say the million. least, Thank it was Whitey's lucky night. He hit the big one. A reputed crime kingpin was suddenly part owner in $14.3 million of taxpayers' legal money after winning the Massachusetts state lottery. I was stunned, absolutely stunned. Immediately, there was public outrage. Many of my constituents are appalled at the fact that, that this organized crime figure is getting all of this... Uh, uh, legal loot. The only person who probably would have caused more trouble is if my mother had won. At Lottery headquarters, officials were busy checking their computers to be sure everything was on the up and up. They determined the winning ticket was a season ticket purchased by a Michael Linsky. It was shared with a Patrick Linsky, I believe his brother, uh, with a James Bulger and with, uh, with a fellow by the name of Kevin Weeks. The winning partnership was made up of three guys from Whitey's neighborhood. Captured on this lottery surveillance video, Whitey, Weeks, and the Linsky brothers went to lottery headquarters just a few days after the lottery drawing. Whitey, highlighted here, and the others picked up the first of their 20 annual installments. Whitey took home more than $89,000. First, the Linskys posed holding the checks, and then Kevin Weeks posed for a picture, and then they said, uh, oh, Mr. Bulger, do you want your picture taken? And he ducked out the uh, side door. Since then, Whitey and the others have been lying low. Could the lottery have possibly been fixed? Everything was absolutely crystal clean. No evidence of any tampering. Those who watch the Boston crime scene say Whitey's bonanza couldn't have come at a better time. Why? Well, it seems everyone was well aware of Whitey's desperate need to launder money as a way to protect his considerable wealth from the IRS. One time he was stopped at Logan Airport trying to take $100,000 out of the country. With his lottery jackpot, Whitey will no longer need to launder his money. Now he can show a significant amount of legal money, and that keeps the IRS uh, off of him, and that keeps the federal authorities off of him. So it seems Whitey Bulger may have gotten away once again. You don't last this long on the streets without a talent for keeping your nose clean, and Whitey's latest coup only ensures his reputation as one of the luckiest men in the crime game. There, there's definitely a, a school of thought out on the street in Boston that, uh, that 
that Whitey, once again, the, you know, pulled a rabbit out of his hat. When you win the lottery, you more or less retire, don't you?